So usually, on the first Sunday in January, I do a talk about how ineffective New Year's resolutions are because they seldom involve a true change in consciousness. I mean, let's be honest, okay? Most of us have made the same resolutions year in and year out. Mine are eat healthier, work out, save money, clean my closets, be more organized. Anybody else? Yeah, 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 yeah. And because there isn't necessarily the corresponding shift internally, within a few weeks or a few months, our resolutions have fallen by the wayside. And then, not only are we not eating healthier and exercising and saving money and being more organized, we feel guilty about it. Yes? So that's what I would normally talk about today. But I didn't want to because I found something on Facebook. You know, I like Facebook, right? I found something on Facebook that spoke to me so profoundly that I decided that it needed to be our New Year's talk for this year because I found this. <laughs> True statement! True statement! It's funny and it's true. I gotta tell you, I don't know how ministers did their jobs before, before the internet. And certainly not before Facebook. I am a Facebook fan. It is a treasure trove to me of inspiration and positivity and funny cat videos. So when I came across this particular writing last week, it absolutely knocked my socks off. It was as if it was written directly for me. And so I posted it on Facebook and I got so many comments and so many people saying, this is speaking just to me, that that's what made me decide that I wanted to base my talk on it today. And I realize this is a little hard to read, but I'm going to read it. Out, I'm going to read it out loud because this is the way it showed up on Facebook. You are not for everyone. The world is filled with people who, no matter what you do, will point blank not like you. But it's also filled with those who will love you fiercely. They are your people. You are not for everyone, and that's okay. Talk to the people who can hear you. Don't waste your precious, precious time and gifts trying to convince them of your value. They won't ever want what you're selling. Don't convince them to walk alongside you. You'll be wasting both your time and theirs, and will likely inflict unnecessary wounds which will take precious time to heal. You are not for them, and they are not for you. Politely wave them on and continue along your way. Sharing your path with someone is a sacred gift. Don't cheapen this gift by rolling yours in the wrong direction. Keep facing your true north. How much time have I personally spent, both personally and professionally, trying to make someone like me who, for whatever reason, just doesn't? I've spent hours scheming and planning on all the ways to bring them around. And when it doesn't work, I've used that experience to beat myself up, to judge myself as unlovable, to validate any feelings I might have of unworthiness. And yet, if I just turn my thoughts a little bit and look at my life as it really is, I would see that there are lots and lots of people who indeed do like me who indeed think I'm worthy and lovable. But because I have my sights set on the ones who don't, I miss out on all the ones who do. Is this speaking to anybody yes. else? Okay, half the group. If this is not speaking to you, don't have brunch, come back. This is what I call 
the 99-1 rule. And the 99-1 rule talks about walking into a room of 100 people. 99 of them love you and want to hang out with you. One of them doesn't care for you. Or even worse, this is the one that gets me, is indifferent to you. I'd rather somebody not like me than like be indifferent to me, you know? So, so I'm just telling you everything about me. You still like me, don't you? <laughs> Following the 99-1 rule, you will spend all of your trying to, time trying to get the one person who doesn't like you to like you, and you will ignore or take for granted the 99 who do love you and see you. You'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, that's cool, but that one person, if I don't change that one person's mind, my life will have no meaning. And as I say it out loud, I, I realize how crazy it sounds. I mean, how silly that we would base our value and our worth on the opinion of one or even a few people, and yet completely ignore the opinions of the vast majority of people who do see our value and our worth. Because the truth in this scenario is that the person who is really withholding love or approval for us is us. If we don't see our value and our worthiness in ourselves, we're going to seek it out here. And we're going to come up wanting. And yet when we know who we are, when we really know who we are, <coughs> divine expressions of the divine, and we recognize that we are here to live and love and learn in our own special and unique way, we can understand that maybe there are going to be some people who do not share our path. I want you to think about this for a second. Think about somebody that you know who is truly confident and self-loving and self-assured. They might encounter someone who doesn't care for them, and they wouldn't bat an eye. They'd understand that their energy and vibration is just not matching the energy and the vibration of the other person. And they would bless the other person on their journey, and they would go on about their journey surrounded by the people whose energy and vibration does match theirs. And if they find themselves in a 99-1 rule situation, they choose to focus on the 99 rather than the 1. And that is the purpose of today's lesson. Excuse me. That's the purpose of today's lesson. You were wondering how it was going to turn it into a science of mind lecture, I know. What we teach in this teaching is that we are always, always, always at choice as to where we are going to put our focus, where we're going to put our attention, where we're going to put our thoughts. When I'm teaching the Science of Mind uh, one class, and many of you have been in my class before, I do a demonstration of this with my students. So what I do is I set up three chairs like this. The chair on the left represents negative experiences and negative people in our lives. The chair on the right represents positive experiences and positive people. And I have a student sit right in the middle and focus on the left chair. So they're focusing on the negativity, what, it, what that left chair represents. And when their head is turned to the left, they can't see the chair on the right. All of their attention and all of their focus is on what this left chair represents. Then I have them choose to put their focus on the right. That chair that represents positivity and love and joy and friends. And again, when their head is turned to the right, they can't see the left chair. Does this make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's what Ernest Holmes calls turning away from the conditions and the people who do not serve our greater good. 
The challenge is we put so much attention and so much focus on what doesn't serve us oftentimes that we don't see that there's a whole different way of looking at things that is more positive and more life affirming. Reminds me of that wonderful teaching story about the uh, elderly native grandfather who is telling his grandson about the battle that goes on within people. And he said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside each of us. One wolf represents anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other wolf represents joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. And the grandson thought about it for a few moments. And then he asked his grandfather, which wolf wins the battle? And the grandfather replied, the one you feed. That's true in every area of our lives, including who we choose to spend a time with. If we choose to pursue those who are not interested in us, we run the risk of feeding that wolf of rejection and hurt and anger and misunderstanding. And the bottom line is that doesn't serve anyone. But when we choose to focus on those who genuinely love us and want to be with us, we nurture feelings of belonging and joy and stability and happiness, and that ends up being a win-win for everyone. So part of understanding the 99-1 rule <clears throat> is to look at which wolf you're feeding. The one that rejects you or the one that accepts and loves you. And by virtue of the universal law of cause and effect, you will receive that which you choose. Does that make sense? Am I looking here? Am I looking here? The law is going to bring it to you. Here's how Ernest Holmes put it. Everything that is consciously and subjectively embodied in our thinking tends to radiate an atmosphere, a vibration, a current of thought, an inward acceptance which automatically attracts to itself <clears throat> that which is like itself. In other words, what we focus on, we attract. So let's go back to those darn people who don't like us and don't care to be in our environment. Does that make them bad people? It is natural. 
It is normal. <coughs> we are not going to be madly in love with all 8 billion people on the planet. We're not always madly in love with the people we're in love with. <coughs> what is not okay, however, is to turn that natural incompatibility, and I realize that sounds like an oxymoron, so just bear with me. I mean, some things are not compatible, okay? Sometimes they're not, and it can be natural, right? So we, we cannot turn that natural incompatibility into hatred. We can choose not to have someone in our life or to do what we need to do to protect ourselves from them. But hatred is not an option. Because no matter who the person is, or how they've treated us, or how they've rejected us, or how they rub us the wrong way, they are still a divine expression of God. They are. And I know that that's really, really hard, especially when someone gets our goat. For instance, I have trouble believing that a certain candidate for President of the United States <laughs> is a divine expression of God. <laughs> by someone or deeply wounded by them. But the spiritual practice of choosing to see the divine in them frees us up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Choosing to see the divine releases us from the bondage of all the stuff we've been talking about. And isn't that what we all want, to be free of those things that keep us from fully experiencing God? And our lives. I'm reminded of a um, scene from the movie Fiddler on the Roof. Yes, most of us have seen Fiddler on the Roof. The Jews have been horribly persecuted by the Tsar and his armies, and, and they're facing a pogrom of massive proportions. And the men are really, really concerned, and they're meeting with the old wise rabbi to get his guidance. And they ask him, Rabbi, is there a blessing for the czar? And the rabbi thinks for a bit and then says, yes. May God bless and keep the czar as far away from us as possible. <laughs> it's actually brilliant if you think about it because it's blessing and it's acknowledging the person as a child of God and also affirming that we don't have to have them in our lives. So if you find yourself in a 99-1 situation or you're faced with someone with whom you're having a difficult relationship, it might be a relative, a co-worker, a neighbor, an acquaintance, an in-law, an ex-spouse, here are a few things to remember. Sometimes you just don't mesh with someone and they with you. You don't have to convince them to love you because you have lots of people who do. Recognize that their path 
is theirs, and yours is yours. You are always <coughs> at choice as to who you are going to give your time, energy, love, and focus to. Choose those who return it in kind. It's also important to see all people as expressions of God, even when it's difficult. And you can still bless them and not have them be major players in your life. That's allowed. So here is my blessing for you this new year and all the time. May you be surrounded by people who love you, whom you love, because you are lovable. Even if one in 99 doesn't know it yet. Happy New Year and so forth.